हॅलो युर माय सेल्फ सचिन राठोड वर्किंग ॲज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन मेकॅनिकल इंजिनिअरिंग डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम वॉलचे इन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नॉलॉजी सोलापूर टुडे वी आर डिलिंग विथ द टॉपिक रोलिंग कॉन्टॅक्ट बेअरिंग सो इन दॅट वी आर गोईंग टू सी द रोलिंग कॉन्टॅक्ट बेअरिंग पार्ट वन जस्ट वी विल सी वॉट आर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द बेअरिंग अँड द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द बेअरिंग इन दिस सेशन सो द लर्निंग आउटकम ऑफ दिस सेशन इज at the end of this session the learner will able to identify the rolling contact bearing so now we will see the introduction about the bearing the bearing is a mechanical element uh, we are using uh, such kind of the bearing in the machine uh, wherever if uh, i want to support the shaft i have to mount the bearing uh, on the shaft and to reduce the friction uh, we have to use the bearing so it is called as a mechanical element the function of the bearing is to guide the relative motion between the two part such as the shaft and the housing with minimum friction and to supports the load acting on the shaft so main purpose of this bearing is to reduce the friction and to support the shaft the friction between the element of the bearing is rolling one so if you consider this is a roller or the ball it is going the relative motion with respect to the inner rays and the outer rays it should be in the rolling one so as there is a minimum friction it is called as a anti friction bearing so see the construction of the bearing so you can pause this video and think about how the bearing are constructed means how the assembly of the bearings they are done so you can think about this okay we will see what are the various elements they are going to use for assembling this rolling bearing or the ball bearing for that purpose you should know the various elements are used in the bearing first one is the inner rest so if you are observing this part is nothing but the inner rays of the bearing this is the first element second element the balls or the rollers so these are the balls which is equally spaced just i will use the different color these are the balls or the rollers currently in this deep groove ball bearing uh, we are observing that the rolling elements as a ball next third element is a cage or retainer so this is a cage it supports to the ball means the ball positions will not get shifted due to the cage or the retainer and the fourth element is a outer rays so this is a outer rays for the ball bearing so there are the four elements we are going to use to construct the bearing that are inner rays outer rays ball and the cage or retainer next is classification of the bearing so the mainly the bearing are classified into the two types one is ball bearing and second one is a roller bearing so if you observe uh, the ball bearing and the roller bearing it is depending upon the point of contact so in case of the ball bearing here the single point of contact is there so because of the single point of contact the wear rate is very less and in case of the line contact it is forms one line that is a contact between your the rolling elements and your the inner and outer rays so in this case we are observing the more wear rate but the advantages of the rolling contact bearing is that it sustain the maximum load carrying capacity as compared to the deep groove ball bearing next classification of the bearing is a radial bearing and the thrust bearing so as if you are observing this figure so in this figure depending upon the direction of the load it is going to classified as radial bearing and the roller bearing so if you observe this this is the shaft on which we are mount the bearing so the load acting on the bearing uh, on the shaft will be the perpendicular to the axis of the shaft 
that is why it is called as radial bearing and this is the second type that is the thrust bearing in which the load is acting parallel to the axis of the shaft here the bearing is mounted so this is your the thrust bearing next one is the types of the rolling contact bearing so these are the types of the rolling contact bearing deep groove ball bearing cylindrical roller bearing angular contact bearing self align bearing spherical roller bearing and taper roller bearing and the thrust ball bearing so we are going to see one by one in details in the next slide so first one is a deep groove ball bearing so the deep groove ball bearing having the high load carrying capacity as compared to the roller bearing the deep groove ball bearing is having the higher load carrying capacity which is acting in the perpendicular to the axis of the shaft it takes the load in the radial as well as the axial direction so this is a advantages of this bearing is that it uh, carries the both load in the radial as well as the axial as compared to your the roller bearing if you consider your the roller bearing the roller bearing will sustain only the radial load due to the point contact between a ball and the recess the frictional losses and the results in temperature rises is less in this bearing so as we discussed in the previous slide the resultant temperature rises is less in the in the deep groove ball bearing because there is a point contact as compared to your roller bearing deep groove ball bearing generates less noise due to the point contact definitely as compared to your the roller bearing here is only the point contact is there so it generates the less noise but the disadvantages of the deep groove ball bearing is that if there is a misalignment in the shaft it will get fail the next classification is cylindrical roller bearing when the maximum load carrying capacity required in a given space the point contact of the ball bearing is replaced by the line contact roller bearing so if you consider your the previous type of the bearing is the deep groove ball bearing in that case if the load is maximum then we can replace the deep groove ball bearing to the cylindrical roller bearing because this is having the capacity of the more load sustain it will sustain the more load and the disadvantages of this bearing is that it will not carry any kind of the axial load also the disadvantages is uh, if there is a misalignment in the shaft it will not sustain that misalignment then the next type of the bearing is a angular contact bearing so if you observe this it is like uh, the grooves are provided to the inner rest and the outer rest so this is your the inner rest and the outer rest on which we are providing the grooves so in between the grooves we are going to rotate the or we are going to place the balls the grooves in the inner and the outer rest are so shaped that the line of the reactions at the contact between the ball and recess makes the angle with the axis of the bearing means what if this is your the axis of the bearing this balls makes an certain angle so it carries the maximum load in the axial as well as the radial directions as compared to the deep groove ball bearing so this is the advantages of this angular contact bearing next classification is self aligned bearing so if you observe this figure in which the self aligned bearing is used the self aligned bearing is nothing but if there is a misalignment in the shaft that misalignment will sustain by this bearing the application where the misalignment can arises due to the error in the mounting or due to the deflection of the shaft so at that times we can use the self aligned bearing next one is a spherical roller self aligned bearing so if the load will not sustain by this self aligned bearing if there is a misalignment in the shaft then we can prefer the self aligned uh, we can prefer the spherical roller self aligned bearing next one is a taper roller bearing so in this figure we are observing that the taper is providing to the roller 
so it having the capacity to sustain the radial as well as the axial load because if you observe your the uh, deep groove ball bearing and the uh, cylindrical bearing in that the deep groove ball bearing will sustain the radial as well as the axial force but it is having the less capacity to sustain the axial load and if you co consider the roller bearing in that it is having the capacity to sustain the radial load it will not sustain the axial load so at that times so we can prefer the taper roller bearing so in this uh, taper roller bearing having the capacity to take the heavy radial as well as the thrust load but the disadvantage of the, this bearing is that if we are using only the single taper roller bearing it will having the axial thrust because of that this portion of the bearing will get separate out or it will get moves along your the axial direction of the shaft because of that we have to use the two taper roller bearing simultaneously on the shaft to nullify the axial thrust the taper roller bearing has more rigidity as compared to your the deep groove ball bearing and the cylindrical bearing the taper roller bearing can easy assembles and the disassemble due to the separable parts so in the animations you will get the assembly of the taper roller bearing next classification is a thrust ball bearing the thrust ball bearing consists of the two rows of balls running between the two rings the shaft ring and the housing ring so this is a shaft on which the load is acting along the shaft at that time we can prefer the thrust bearing the thrust bearing carries the thrust load in only one direction and cannot carries the radial load so it will not sustain the radial forces so this is the drawback of this thrust bearing then the next one is a needle roller bearing it has a cylindrical roller that are small in diameter relative to the length so as compared to your the cylindrical bearing we are already seen in the uh, second slide so as compared to that the diameter is relatively less as compared to the length so when it is required uh, or when the, there is a low load at that times we can prefer the needle roller bearing where the radial only the radial load is going uh, this is my references thank you